we are Privy Art, your number one expert in wildlife art and human portrait. We offer a wide range of services that includes wildlife art, pet art, human portraits, landscape art, and all forms of decorative art. Get in touch with us today to own your custom-made wildlife art and human portraits. Transform your space with our unique creations. Check out more of our work in the following artworks. For more on our artworks and inquiries, visit our social media platforms shown on screen or contact us at the numbers provided. Creatives see things differently. They are said to be dreamers. They reproduce what they feel. They reproduce what they think about and they put it in, in paper or they also put it in drawing. Today, I've got an artist. As I welcome you to Slime Media TV, my name is Simbarashe Zidza. Um, previous, can you greet the followers and those looking at you right now and uh, tell them who you are and what you do? Okay. Uh, thank you, viewers and followers. My name is Previous Maziva, and in the art circles, I am known as Privy, and I'm a visual artist or a pencil artist. That's what I do. I, I would want you to uh, make it clear there, a visual artist, a pencil artist, you know, uh, we want to know the difference between other artists and you. Okay. Uh, what I do is I bring life to paper. I draw using my pencils. Uh, my form of art is known as realism. I produce realistic pictures using my pencils. Um, at times I'll be copying from a source reference, at times I'll be creating from my own head. So what I do is creative, Realism art. Creative realism art. Indeed, we are grateful to be with you at Slam Media TV. Thank you so much. And uh, we really want to know how this came about. Uh, probably tell us from uh, when you were born, uh, then how did this come into you, this uh, art talent? Okay, uh, I was born here in Arare, and uh, I grew up, my, I did my primary education in Kadoma. That's where I discovered that I was a born artist. I never did art at school, but I started drawing whenever I was free. I would take that time and the opportunity to grab a paper and a pencil, and the, I would be seen sketching something. It was roughly when I was in grade five. When we used to draw at school, those basic things that we normally do at primary level. So I was so outstanding as compared to other students uh, uh, who I was learning with. My pictures or my products were the ones who were stuck on the walls and everyone would be looking at them in, in awe and they were amused by my artwork. But ever since then, I never took it seriously. I took it as a hobby. I used to do my artwork whenever I had nothing else to do. I enjoyed doing art. Whenever I was alone at home, I would grab a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and started sketching something, copying from somewhere. And I discovered that I was good at that. I could produce a very good uh, picture from anything, be they, buildings, motor vehicles, animals, human beings, all sorts of things. That's when I discovered that I could do art. Well, but I see uh, nowadays uh, your art has so much has reached another level. Yes. And what did you do to make yourself uh, this good? The fun thing is, as I earlier on alluded to, I never did art at school. But uh, my improvement, I attribute it to continuous practice. I took my time practicing so hard 
and uh, I would also watch some tutorials even on YouTube and uh, I would take my time to watch even other renowned artists how exactly they achieved whatever they wanted to achieve. So I basically attribute it to continuous practice. Whatever that you want to do, I think you agree with me in life. If you put your mind on it and continuously engage yourself in it, indulge yourself in practicing it so hard, you perfect your skill. Even in soccer, we can see it by continuously practicing, you perfect your skill. So I think and I would like to believe that continuous practice helped me to reach this far. Now, um, I understand you've taken uh, this as a, as a professional. Yes. As a profession, I mean to say. Yes. And uh, when did you decide to turn professional? I started going professional in the year 2020. I've been doing art all this long, but without necessarily taking it that seriously. But uh, from 2020, uh, that's when I made my first international sale. So I think that marked my taking art as a profession. But before then, I had been doing it, but at a lesser scale. Tell us about this, this sale and how it motivated you to turn professional. Uh, this helped me a lot in my art journey, this sale. I did a rooster which I posted on my social media handles. And there was one, uh, she's now a friend of mine. She's based in the United States of America. She liked the rooster. She owns rather a rooster sanctuary. So she liked the rooster and she emailed me, how much is the rooster? And I told her and she fell in love with it. We agreed the terms, she posted the money, and I shipped the rooster to here. That was my major breakthrough in the art industry. Well, a rooster, uh, and uh, how did, does that happen, that uh, you build a trust among such people who may have never seen, the people that have never talked to you personally, but they can trust to send money to you so that you ship them the the product that we have made? Uh, I believe it's from the interactions, the initial interactions that we had. Um, we don't just make a transaction without getting to know each other better. We interacted, getting to know each other. What else do you do? Uh, how much time did you take in making this? Can I have some progress shots of this rooster? Was normally some are con artists. They can print pictures and profess as if they, they have drawn them. So I took her through the journey uh, from the beginning, from my sketching up to the final stage of the product. And she was happy. And we built um, a mutual relationship up to a point that she, I know it's, it, it's a 50-50, it's a, a risk also. It, 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 it was possible that I might have sent here uh, the progress shots of someone else, but she had faith in me of what uh, I had shown her. And at times, I, I remember I took uh, my picture holding the rooster so that she knows that I had it in my hands. It's not something that I had, that is elsewhere, that is not on me. So that relationship that we had created initially helped in building the trust between us. Okay, then uh, you turned a uh, professional in 2020. Yes. Take us through the journey from the time that you turned professional until today. How has it been? And what has happened to you? Uh, how much have you been, how have you benefited with that uh, turning professional? I, I would like to say I've benefited a lot uh, in this sense since then, since my first sale that I've earlier on alluded to, uh, that friend of mine 
started referring a lot of her other friends to me. Uh, whoever would come into her house would ask, oh wow, who did this for you? And she would refer uh, them to me. And I started getting uh, more and more clients from that particular cell. So up to now, I would like to say the journey is not just, uh, is not perfect, but uh, I, I would like to say it's not bad as well. Like any other profession, like any other journey, it has its own challenges, but I would want to say from that day onwards, things that have improved for me. Okay, things have improved for previous Privy art. Um, I want to, to come back to your artwork. Um, I see uh, what type of media do you use to do your art? Uh, during my practice period, I've used almost all media and I have mastered the skill of using all media. Uh, when I talk of media, I'm talking of oils. These are oil-based paints, acrylics. These are water-based paints. I can use all those. I've also, I can use graphite. These are pencils that we normally use at primary school. They're known as graphite. I, I can use leads. I can use pastel. Uh, as you can see, these ones I am using right now are pastel pencils. These are known as soft pastel pencils. So what I'm using right now, these are soft pastel pencils. And uh, these are my favorite tools. I've tried all these other tools that I've earlier on said, but the soft pastel pencils, not that they are easy to use, yeah. but they are the least used in the uh, art industry. Uh, the easiest are charcoals, maybe for me, the easiest are charcoals, but uh, they are the ones that are used by the majority of artists in the art industry. So I decided to take a slight shift from the usual and the, use the soft pastel pencils. They are a bit difficult to use, but as of now, I've m mastered this art and skill of using them to produce uh, masterful art. Okay. Um, I know um, artists, they thrive on exhibitions. Um, have you been to any exhibitions uh, locally or abroad? Yes, I have been to many exhibitions locally and uh, abroad. Uh, of much interest might be the annual Jakaranda Art Fair that is held at the Boro del Rescos annually um, in October or early November. I have been exhibiting there for quite a time and I've been to many other smaller exhibitions. Also internationally, I have gone to Cape Town where I exhibited my artwork at the Kupenda Art Gallery. Rather, I have my pieces which are there at the Kupenda Art Gallery in Cape Town and some of the smaller gal galleries in South Africa. So I've been, my name is quite a household name in Cape Town, in art circles, and here in Zimbabwe. And uh, how has been the uptake of your art at these exhibitions? And uh, how much has that uh, motivated you? The uptake, of course, it's lower than expected, but uh, it has managed to take me, to, to, to help me uh, bring food to my table. I can't complain. The uptake has been good. You know, as someone who's selling something, you expect all your products to be taken, but uh, it has not been like that. But the majority of my artwork has been uh, what burns at the market. Okay. And uh, tell us about the contacts made through those uh, exhibitions. Yeah, the contacts made, I have made quite a number of contacts, quite a number. I, off yet, I can't tell the specific or the exact number, but I've made quite a, I, I met quite a lot of people, quite a lot. And uh, from those exhibitions, I have also managed to have other commissions, 
uh, new clients, new networks, new friends, and uh, these help these exhibitions they help me a lot in terms of marketing my and making uh, a lot of sales of my artwork. Okay, tell me about commissions. Um, any major commissions so far that you've uh, done, maybe publicly or others are much, much, much secret? Yes, maybe I would want to mention names, may, but I've had co a lot of commissions um, I've done for companies yeah, that would want to exhibit local exhibitions international exhibitions like the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair, the Zimbabwe Agricultural Show, the provincial shows and stuff. I have done uh, a lot of commissions for different and various uh, companies and other commissions are personal, uh, are personal based. Some individuals would want their portraits done, uh, some would want to have their pets drawn uh, and other various forms of decorative art. So I would not want maybe to mention particular names for the safety and security of my clients and for their privacy, but I've managed to have quite a number of commissions. Now, we're coming back to your uh, subjects. Uh, what is it that inspires you to pick a subject to draw? Mm, normally, as you have seen, I major uh, on wildlife. Why I have chosen wildlife is that uh, I want to create awareness uh, amongst my clients, especially on animals uh, that are found in Africa. Some animals are extinct, some animals are endangered, so I would want to create uh, that harmony between humans and the animals. So whenever, even if you are to check my uh, social media handles. I try, whenever I post my artwork, I try to put a, a, an awareness a phrase or a paragraph explaining a, the animal and the importance of having it on earth and the imp uh, importance of avoiding poaching. So uh, the inspiration is on my love for animals and I the animals don't talk, so I'm more of the voice of the voiceless, the voice of the animals that cannot speak on their behalf. Uh, I'm their mouthpiece, so that inspires me a lot. I, I also see lots and lots of birds in your artwork, and uh, why? I love birds. I love birds. I've been to a lot of bird sanctuaries here in Zimbabwe. We have Kuyimba Shiri. Uh, we have um, uh, the other one in Domboshava, I have forgotten the name. I have developed a passion for birds in as much as I can do any other wildlife art. But I have a, an inclined or a biased passion towards birds, my love for birds. So whenever I do my art, I do it maybe in a garden where I can see birds singing, I can hear the birds singing see birds flying and stuff. My be uh, the birds, I love a lot. And your favorite, maybe to just ask. The f uh, my favorite bird, uh, rather I, I think I have two favorite birds. Yes. I have the kingfisher and I have the lilac breasted roller. These which, are found in Africa. Which one is that one? The lilac breasted roller, I think uh, this is a very colorful bird, a very, if I'm not mistaken, it has over eight colors. It is lilac, it is sky blue, it is brown, it is orange, it is purple, it is brown, it is black, it is blue. This is very colorful. So that colorfulness is what made me love it. Okay, and the kingfisher now? The kingfisher. Um, I admire its speed and technique when it is hunting. Um, the kingfisher, uh, the, that is where the Japanese uh, got the inspiration of making a bullet train. The way it dives into water in search of prey, it's so amazing. 
so amazing. It looks like you have studied, you have studied wildlife, my brother. <laughs> Do you read about these birds or its things? What inspires <laughs> you to know much about uh, birds and animals? Yeah. I, I take my time to read uh, some pieces that is to do that have to do with uh, wildlife, and uh, I also watch uh, the National Geographic Channel that covers wildlife. So, as a part, as a passion that I have, especially as an inclination that I have towards birds, I've become to know. I've come to know a lot about uh, the the birds. And I see today you've got this piece that you are working on right and right now. Yes. Uh, what's that one? This is a, a, a kingfisher. Again. Yes, this is a kingfisher. So I have done quite a number of kingfishers. I I I have since lost count. I've uh, done a, a lot of them. Okay. I know each uh, profession has its own challenges. And uh, what challenges do you meet in coming out with? A master, a master piece like you are working on now. The major challenge uh, I have encountered in my art journey, and in coming up with what I would want to achieve, uh, is the price tags, especially on art material. The material, especially locally. The, it is expensive, the prices are too steep. So at times you'll be forced to do with very limited resources where you would want to have a variety and wide range of uh, materials. So that's the major drawback that I have encountered in my art chain, having insufficient equipment. That's the, the major drawback. And uh, I see, um given all this that we have done already, um, how do people take uh, this art in, in Zimbabwe locally? The uptake here in Zimbabwe is a bit low. It's a bit low. Uh, basically, the locals, I would say, some of them, maybe it's because of the economy or what, but uh, the uptake has been a bit low. Ma the majority of my clients, uh, they have been from out of the country. In as much as I've made uh, quite a number of sales locally, but as compared to the international market, the clients are more from out of the country than they are from within. Okay. What could be the, the, the reason? Is it not in the pricing? How much does a, a, a piece like this cost, uh, your pricing? Maybe we can also attribute it to the price. Maybe we can also attribute it to the uh, liquidity challenges that we are currently facing in the country. So whenever one has money, one would rather have uh, food than a piece of artwork, something like that. The economic challenge that we are facing as a country. But uh, basically, art is affordable. I would say it is affordable. F the prices range from around $50 for an A4 upwards, depending on the subject, of course. The subject uh, or the subjects, they are the ones that determine the price. Okay. Yes. For example? For example, uh, one would want to have a, 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 a piece of artwork with one bed, for example. And someone would have would want to have a piece of artwork with ten beds. Maybe the sizes of the paper they are the same, but the amount of work that you are going to put on one bed and the amount of work that you are going to put on quite a number of beds, that to differentiate the prices. So uh, the other thing is the medium used. For Someone would want to have a piece of artwork in charcoal, and someone would want to have a piece of artwork in oils. Someone would have, uh, would want pastels and stuff. So the demand, or the the yes, let me say the demand in in the usage of that particular material that one would want to have. 
is the is what makes uh, the prices vary, right. the availability of the material and the price of the material to be used. All right. Ah. Then, uh, as, as, as an artist, uh, your appeal to the generality of the people in Zimbabwe and uh, uh, those that uh, want to know more about your art. Uh, to those who want to know more about my art, I please get uh, please get in touch with me. I think um, it needs a lot of time to explain. So I can someone can get uh, to me through my Twitter handle, through my uh, Instagram handle, to my TikTok handle, my Facebook handle, uh, which I will share. I think it's on the screen as you can see. Uh, to know more about what I produce. You can still uh, get in touch with me even via email or via WhatsApp. But we normally know uh, that we want to be what you are today, to be a professional uh, artist. Uh, there are inspirations. Yes. You draw inspiration from some other people that have done the art before. Uh, have you got one or two or something? Uh, this might sound a bit silly, but uh, my major, major inspiration was uh, a friend of mine who I did primary school with. He, his name was Munashe Dondo. We used to draw together. Uh, unfortunately, I lost his whereabouts. I don't even know where he is right now. But from back then, we used to draw together and he was really, really good. He was good. So I just wanted to be like him. Whenever I grabbed a piece of paper and pencil, I just wanted to be like Munashi. And he, he unknowingly made me what I am right now. And you have lost the contact with him? Unfortunately. Uh, that I, was, I, I, wish, um, I wish you could see what you are doing. I now. also wish the same. Isn't. Then, uh, Privy, uh, to young uh, aspiring artists, what's your words to them? And to, are you doing anything to help? The, 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 the little ones, the young ones. I'm more than willing to help uh, upcoming artists. I'm, uh, my hands are wide open for anyone who would like to learn about art. And to them, I just want to urge them to keep on soldiering. There are a lot of challenges in the art journey, uh, but it needs a lot of patience, a, net, a lot of practice, a lot of exposure. In, in, this is a career. It's no, no longer a hobby as I used to know it. Art is actually a career, especially in our setup where there is little or no employment, formal employment. Art is actually a career. You can earn a good living out of art. So keep on keeping on. Wow, that's great. Keep on keeping on. Uh, that's great, Prithi. I'm Unfortunately, we would want to talk more about the, your art and probably visit your art studio and see how you create uh, your stuff. Sure. Uh, any parting words that you want to say to Zimbabweans and to those that are watching you right now? Uh, I would like to thank uh, the generality of Zimbabwe. Uh, some of them are beginning to appreciate art. It has been a sidelined career all this long, but of late, people are beginning to develop a remarkable interest in art. Uh, this can be seen in the uptake um, of our art locally and internationally. So I'd like to applaud the Zimbabweans uh, in the generality of the world uh, to keep on supporting upcoming and already established artists. Oh, I'd forgotten to take another question. I know you have got a a, a, a benchmark, I mean, something that, is, that you wish to be and uh, wherever you wish to be in, in the near future. What is your, your ambition, your, uh, your vision as an artist? Uh, what I would like to achieve, I would like, I know there is no ceiling in art. Art keeps on going on. Uh, but what, what I would want to have is to have a world uh, a, a household name globally, like what the uh, like what Da Vinci did. To have a, a when 
each and every individual thinks of art to think of my name. That's what I want to hear to wow. achieve. You want everybody to think about your name when they think about art. Sure. Uh, that's great, uh, Privy. Uh, you can take us through some of these brushes and pencils. I don't <laughs> even know what they are here. <laughs> and well, how you use them, maybe starting from the... And, uh, okay, these are the pastel uh, pencils I've been talking of. All these are soft pastel pencils. Uh, and in here, these are soft pastel blocks. These are brushes. These are used for for blending my color in, and, and mixing my my color uh, and mm, blending the colors. So the brushes are useful not only in soft pastel, but these are also used in wet media. By wet media, I mean oils and also acrylics. So these are the tools that I have. This. Um, masking tape this i i use to make a border of my artwork as you can see on other finished products how it will come out when i remove this uh, from my the borders of my artwork okay. it creates a very good a border uh, when you want to frame the artwork so these are the tools that i have currently uh, with me right now then it makes me uh, ask one thing how do you mix your colors uh, are you taught or it just comes naturally? Yeah, it comes uh, with practice. Mm. Like uh, I said, I never went to any art school. Mm. So uh, it comes with practice. Mm. Trial and error, trial and error up to a point where you know exactly what to do to achieve a certain range of colors. Okay. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm seeing you are drawing right now. What yes. stage are you at now? You are drawing that kingfisher bed. Uh, this stage I call it detailing. I start with sketching. I start uh, applying the colors. Then this is the final stage where I'll put in the minute details. This uh, is the finishing stage right now. Okay. Yes. And how long does it take for you to create a, a piece? It depends on the size. Some I can take to 24 cumulative hours, 72, 48, depending on the size. For this one, I would say it has taken me something like 24 hours. Okay. No, thank you very much for your time, Privy. Uh, viewers, um, talent is abundant in Zimbabwe, and uh, you might not know what your neighbor does until we tell you. Um, let's keep on supporting our artists, and uh, let's on Let's keep on giving them the platform they, they may need. Also support them by buying from them. Yes. You know, it is always a pleasure to have an artwork that is hung on your walls in your dining room or in your bedroom. It shows uh, your appreciation of the talents that we have in Zimbabwe. We'll continue giving you many of these artists and those that have hidden talents in their uh, homesteads or in, in their hands. Um, until we meet again in another program, my name is Simbara Shishidza. Have a good viewing and meet you on another platform. Thank you. Bye-bye. We are Privy Art, your number one expert in wildlife art and human portrait. We offer a wide range of services that includes wildlife art, pet art, human portraits, landscape art, and all forms of decorative art. Get in touch with us today to own your custom-made wildlife art and human portraits. Transform your space with our unique creations. Check out more of our work in the following artworks. For more on our artworks and inquiries, visit our social media platforms shown on screen or contact us at the numbers provided.